Hi Year 4, welcome to your next video introducing a new math skill for your Pentecost term. Today the learning challenge we're going to look at sounds worse than it is. Can you solve problems involving multiplying and adding harder correspondence problems such as n objects are connected to m objects? Now that sounds complicated but it really isn't, I promise you. As with these other videos, I want you to use this like a maths basic skill session. The only difference being that you can pause this video if you want me to stop talking for a bit, which you can't do in real life. Lucky you. So do that as and when you need to. Otherwise, exactly like a maths basic skill lesson, you should have your maths book in front of you. You should be sitting up nice and straight with a pencil and a rubber handy. As always, we're going to start with some times tables and it's the six times table today, please. So the bronze award goes to those who manage to do one times six is six, two times six, etc. Then move on to the silver, which is the same as before, but we are thinking about using our commutativity. If you've seen my other video about that, you'll know exactly what I mean. So again, it's your six times table. This time written as six times one is six, six times two, etc. The gold is the inverse fact of the six times table. So six divided by six is one, 12 divided by six is two. And if you get onto the platinum in 10 minutes, we're going to do the cockroach legs times table. One cockroach has six legs, two cockroaches have 12 legs, and so on. So give yourself 10 minutes, you should have time to do all of those times tables in 10 minutes. On your marks, get set, go. Pause this video, come back to it when you're done. Okay, can you answer these questions please? Shout nice and loud with your answers. How many legs does one cockroach have? How many legs do two cockroaches have? How many legs do three cockroaches have? How many legs do four cockroaches have? By the way, if you're at all unsure about why we're discussing cockroaches, you need to check out our topic video and listen to our story, A Journey for Hope, and then it will all make sense. So hopefully you've got some answers down for that. One cockroach has six legs, two cockroaches have 12, three cockroaches have 18 legs, and four cockroaches have 24 legs. So if I can count 42 legs, how many cockroaches must there be? If I can count 42 legs, how many cockroaches must there be? Now you might still have your times tables written out in front of you. So you're looking for 42 and finding out how many sixes there are in there. Is it one, two, three? Well, let's see, we've got six, 12, 18. So no, nope, can't be three cockroaches. Is it four, five, six? Well, six sixes are 36, so we haven't got to 42 yet. Seven, if you wrote seven cockroaches, then you are correct. Okay, so we're going to begin to look at our correspondence problems now. And here's a fact for you. A cockroach has six legs and two antennae, which are those little stalks on its head that it uses to feel its way around the world. Cockroach has six legs and two antennae. If I can count 12 legs, how many antennae must there be? So on one cockroach, six legs and two antennae. If I can count 12 legs in front of me, how many antennae must there be? Have a think, make a note of your answer. If you're not sure, let's have a look at one cockroach, two cockroaches. Look carefully at those legs. We've got six on the first, six on the second, so we have our total of 12 legs. And now that we can see, there should be four antennae. Now the maths that we needed to do that, we needed to divide 12 by six, first of all, 
to find out how many cockroaches there are. So 12 legs divided by 6 gave us 2. And then we needed to multiply 2 by 2 to find out how many antennae there were. So 12 divided by 6 gave us 2. And then we multiplied that by 2 to find out how many antennae. If I can count 48 cockroach legs, how many antennae must there be? So we'll deal with that one first. 48 cockroach legs. Remember, we need to divide that by 6 first of all to find out how many cockroaches there must be. And then multiply that answer by 2 to find out how many antennae must there be. Make a note of your answer. And we'll go through that one together before looking at the second one. So what you have to do is 48 divided by 6, first of all. That's your first step. Well, I know that 6 eighths are 48. So 48 divided by 6 must be 8. And then I have to multiply that by 2, because there are two antennae on each cockroach. So I had 8 multiplied by 2, that must be 16 antennae. And the same process for the next problem. If I can count 20 antennae, how many legs must there be? So this time we're looking at antennae. First, if I can count 20 antennae, remember there's two on each cockroach. So if there's 20 altogether, how many cockroaches must there be? And then once we found out how many cockroaches there are, we can multiply that by 6 to find out how many legs there are. Have a think, do some drawings if you need to. Well done if you've already worked it out. Work a bit longer if you haven't. Right, let's go through it together. 20 antennae. So we'll divide that by 2 first of all, because each cockroach has 2 antennae. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. Then we're going to do 10 multiplied by 6. 10 cockroaches with 6 legs each. 10 times 6 is 60. Well done if you had that answer. OK, let's have a look at a new problem and see if we can solve it together. We're going to introduce two other characters from the story now. So we've got our six-legged cockroach. For the purposes of this maths lesson, our meerkat is going to be a two-legged creature. Now I know he only stands on two legs to act as a lookout, but for this maths lesson we'll call him a two-legged creature. And our hedgehog who has four legs. Now I want you to imagine I can only count 24 feet. I can't explain why I can't see the rest of the creatures. Perhaps there's a sandstorm in the desert. Whatever it is, I can only see their feet. Now, if it was just cockroaches, how many cockroaches must there be if I can see 24 feet? If it was just meerkats, how many meerkats must there be if I can only see 24 feet? And the same with the hedgehogs. How many must there be? So you need to do three separate calculations for this. 24 feet divided by 6 first of all should have given you 4 cockroaches. 24 feet divided by 2 for our meerkats. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 12 meerkats and 24 divided by 4 how many hedgehogs must there be must be 6 hedgehogs but what if these creatures were traveling in their group again I can only see their feet but there's combinations of creatures there might be lots of cockroaches and not many meerkats there might be several hedgehogs and only one cockroach, we just don't know. And there's going to be different solutions to this answer. 
so we need to be systematic. We're going to set out a table, giving you one to start you off with. I think from the 24 feet that I can see, that must be two cockroaches making 12 feet, four meerkats making eight feet, and one hedgehog making four feet. My 12 plus eight plus four would give me the total of 24 feet. But what other combinations can you find out? See how many you can come up with. Well done, Year 4. I want you to have a go at creating your own correspondence table now. You might even want to challenge yourself by introducing a new character with eight legs. If you're not sure which creatures have eight legs, I want you to search arachnids and see which desert living animal you could find with eight legs and introduce that to your maths. Try to research whether snakes officially have legs and I got very distracted by finding out that they actually have toes and decided that would make my maths too complicated. So for now I'd recommend sticking with the two-legged, four-legged, six-legged and eight-legged characters. When you're finished you might want to get creative, draw example creatures, colour them in afterwards, create a whole scene using your maths correspondence knowledge. Right, have fun year four. Speak soon.